The Matrix 4 Resurrections and Star Trek Picard Season 2 Impressions by a Modern Mystic. Topics include, Two Great Universes. The Nostalgia Cash Cow. Star Trek Picard, Season 2. Back to the Future, Earth. Picard S2, Key Plot. The Matrix 4 Resurrections. Lyrics to White Rabbit by Jefferson Airplane. A New Matrix Trilogy, DNN. The Plot Revealed. A Monster Hit? All a Simulation, There is No Karma, There is Only Attachment. When two of my favorite sci-fi universes launch new trailers for their latest releases, I pay attention. Even though it has become painfully obvious that both of these franchises are pandering to their devotees and providing total fan service of pure nostalgia, both trailers are incredibly faithful to their respective canons. It seems that we have run out of new sci-fi storylines and are forever stuck in a loop, not unlike The Matrix, with such familiar characters as Neo, Trinity, Morpheus vs. The Matrix, Picard, Seven of Nine and Q Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia and variations on Darth Vador. And of course, Kirk, Bones, and Spock. Let's not forget countless comic book superheroes. I wouldn't be surprised if Kirk, Skywalker or Neo get reintroduced to new generation of viewers decades from now. If they worked in 1966 or 1977 or 1999 and are still relevant in 2021, they will also be relatable decades from now. Remember, Superman was first introduced in 1938 and Batman in 1939 and they are a hot property to this day. The Nostalgia Cash Cow George Lucas famously wanted to push the storyline of Star Wars forward and keep coming up with new characters facing new challenges. However, Disney had other ideas. Why try the unknown when they can have the sure thing with nostalgia? Don't underestimate the power of a cash cow. The force of a cash cow is very strong in whole of our entertainment industry. The pattern of milking a franchise with endless loops and rehashing of the same stories is now the norm in the industry. As the, surprisingly exciting, The Matrix 4 trailer proves. I have referenced The Matrix many times in my books and writings and wrote several articles on the season 1 of Star Trek, Picard, right here on my Medium platform. This review contains spoilers on both the Star Trek, Picard Season 2 and The Matrix 4 Resurrections. You've been warned. Star Trek, Picard, Season 2. Let's start with ST, Picard. I am so glad that they are shifting away from the original storyline of chasing after synthetic beings, androids. That ridiculous plotline got massive amount of backlash because it didn't make any sense. Way too many plot holes and convenient storylines. The fact that a near 90-year-old Picard becomes a synth at the end, yet with no special abilities, nor extended lifespan is one of the biggest missteps in Trek history. And the entire season 1 revolved around a simple premise that the synths are bad and the Romulans can't stand them. But somehow a few hundred cutting-edge Romulan military vessels couldn't put a dent in a tiny population of a couple of dozen synths, living on a small property, on a lone and out-of-the-way planet. Come on! That's just sci-fi trash. Glad to see that most of season 1 could potentially be excused as a glitch in the timeline to be corrected by the guidance, or resistance, of Q, the Borg Queen and time travel, sounds familiar? A sort of a dream, not unlike the Matrix. And thankfully we're moving head first into pure Trek nostalgia at warp 9.8 with the season 2. Back to the future, Earth. One of Star Trek's most staple storylines is a visit to our current timeline, or a timeline near present by almost every franchise, starting with the original series. They even used this plotline in two very successful Trek movies, The Voyage Home and First Contact. The fact that they decided to dust off this fan-favorite plotline for the season 2 of Picard is a clear indication that they, hopefully, have stopped fighting the fans and decided to give in to the diehards and give them what they want, rather than coming up with unpopular, nonsensical storylines just to attract new viewers, which didn't happen. As I mentioned above, the economics of the power of nostalgia has solidly been established by the relaunch of sci-fi universes like Star Wars using old favorite characters. The same is true with the Picard S2 and the Matrix 4. Nostalgia works. Picard S2, Key Plot In the Star Trek, Picard Season 2, Q, a popular character from TNG, is back and our new slash old team is going back to the present Earth, Los Angeles to be exact. Of course, LA is the home of the Trek studio and shooting here in the present time saves huge production costs. Obviously, the lowest cost sci-fi movie would be set in the present time, rather than expensive sets and massive CGI. However, that's not the only reason for this decision. Star Trek The Voyage Home movie is among the top three most popular Trek films, 
The other two are The Wrath of Khan and First Contact, also about going back to a past period on Earth to save the future, and just like First Contact, the ST, Picard brings back the Borg Queen, who seems to be under some type of restraint and probably in a protective custody of humans. Maybe the Borg Queen is in a witness protection program by the Federation to keep her safe from the Corleone family. Why not? Let's double the nostalgia to double the fun and revenue. Just kidding, of course, on the Corleone, but the Trek universe is no stranger to the plotlines involving the mob, dating back to the toast with a piece of the action. The Matrix 4 Resurrections I admit, the trailer to The Matrix 4 is very powerful. I think the trailer is a total home run. Also, running the hit song, White Rabbit by Jefferson Airplane, 1967, in the background really puts it over the top. I am going to share the poignant lyrics to that iconic song below. It's important for it to be read word by word. Lyrics to White Rabbit by Jefferson Airplane, 1967. One pill makes you larger. And one pill makes you small. And the ones that mother gives you. Don't do anything at all. Go ask Alice. When she's 10 feet tall. And if you go chasing rabbits. And you know you're going to fall. Tell him a hookah smoking caterpillar. Has given you the call. Call Alice. When she was just small. When the men on the chessboard. Get up and tell you where to go. And you've just had some kind of mushroom. And your mind is moving low. Go ask Alice. I think she'll know. When logic and proportion. Have fallen sloppy dead. And the white knight is talking backwards. And the red queen's off with her head. Remember what the dormouse said. Feed your head. Feed your head. Feed your head. A new Matrix trilogy, DNN. The trailer alone shows incredible editing prowess. This could easily be one of the most successful trailers in recent years. However, the storyline is a familiar one. There is Neo, Trinity, Agent Smith, Morpheus, Zion red and blue pills, possibly a new oracle and a new character called the Analyst that replaces the architect from the original trilogy. M4 will show new zombie-like beings as well, just to merge another popular franchise with the Matrix universe. The good guys still move in and out of the Matrix or within different facets or layers of it. And all evidence points to a launch of a new trilogy, as this seems to be a new slash old beginning of the agent fighting duo of Neo and Trinity, or to be more accurate Trinity and Neo. Trinity, as the Holy Mother, is now in command. Neo as the Christ figure is now sitting on her lap, like in a Pieta. The plot revealed. If you search on YouTube you'll come across a detailed leaked plot for The Matrix 4. It was shared from those who have seen the early cuts of the full film. I'll mention just the overall arc of the story. The Matrix 4 is set 60 years after the revolutions. The machine god, Deus Ex Machina, has revived both Neo's and Trinity's bodies and they are kept in unique and isolated pods. However, their residual self-images in the Matrix are initially unaware of their past. Neo's thoughts are being constantly suppressed with an endless prescription of mind and memory inhibiting blue pills prescribed by the analyst, a machine. Eventually some red pills get to Neo and attempt at waking him up. He is joined ultimately by red-pilled Trinity and together they form an unstoppable force. From what they shared on YouTube, they both fly into the screen together in the final shot as a clear indication of more sequels to come. This is of course just a very simple overview of the new Matrix, there is a lot more to the story with Agent Smith, Merovingian, a non-human Morpheus and zombies all making appearances. A monster hit? I don't think anyone has any doubt that the new Matrix 4 is going to be a mega hit. This could easily become the biggest hit among latest releases and possibly even bigger than the original trilogy, because the myth and the legend of the Matrix is so much greater now than it was 20 years ago. All a simulation, there is no karma, there is only attachment. The Matrix universe is perhaps one of the most instrumental vehicles in awakening of the public to the concepts of ascension and our perceived reality as mere illusion. The great mystics of the past consistently warned those, who were ready to hear, with the three rules of ascension and true freedom from this planet of fear, violence and oppression. Those rules are, intention, overcoming fear and lack of attachments. I don't use the word karma, because it doesn't exist. It's just another method of control and fear-inducing terminology. There is no such thing as karma, nothing binds you to anything, except your own desires, wants and needs. The entire universe is a projection of your own mind and psyche, when you learn to expand your mind and shake up your attachments and dust off your false beliefs, your consciousness expands many folds.